Well, we've just about limped our way to the end of another work week. Thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Logan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well and enjoying the largely sunny skies at the moment here. And it looks as if that's going to continue to be the case through much of the weekend as we uh, see the continuation of this reasonably decent weather. So, yeah, uh, the upcoming weekend will host uh, episode three of Weather Talk. It will be an interview with somebody based in the Met Office. I will say no more. That will be released around 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. So I hope you can uh, enjoy that when it is released. And on Sunday at 4 p.m., as usual, the live stream will be available for everybody to join in, drop a comment, ask a question, and I'll do my best to answer those questions as best I can. Be sure to hit that like button, share with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel. I do greatly appreciate that. Lots of hard work going on here in the background at Marvogan Weather HQ. I do work a uh, full-time job doing night shift, driving up and down between Glasgow and uh, Inverness, but uh, I also am very busy here in the channel building the summer forecast that will be released a week on Sunday at 4 p.m., and it will be released live here on YouTube. So uh, something to uh, look forward to next weekend. So, um, so yeah, interesting tweet here by Aidan McGivern here. This was uh, released on Twitter just four hours ago, showing that the first 16 days of May is actually running record warm for the UK. And this graphic shows that quite nicely. It has been a very, very mild first half to May for sure. And as you can see here, this top orangey line represents the record. And it has literally just surpassed that orange line, meaning that it is at record warm levels for the first 16 days of the month. Incidentally, it is also running slightly drier than average, which is rather interesting because in recent days, I did start to question my May outlook a little bit, saying that um, I did definitely think that the north would be drier and warmer compared to the south. It would be slightly wetter than average, probably across the south of the UK, based on the upper air pattern, high pressure over low pressure. And that is quite often the case. We've seen that back last May as well. You quite often find easterly winds. We've got a lot, a very, very weak steering flow at this time of the year. The jet stream is traditionally at its weakest levels of the entire year. Uh, and then the jet starts to kind of liven up a little bit as we move into the summer season. So that may uh, provide a little bit more, little bit more to go with or to go by in terms of the overall situation. We're going to look at uh, some of the longer range models for the for June as well in today's video, so stay, stay tuned um, if you're interested in that. But uh, generally speaking, my forecast was a warmer than average and a slightly drier than average May for the UK as a whole, but with caveats to that, wetter south, drier north. And so far through at least 16 days of May, it has been the case. This is another interesting graphic showing uh, the anomaly compared to average and really stands out how warm compared to average the northern half of the UK has been. Whereas along the south coast, Isle of Wight, for example, it's been closer to average. Um, and really for the last several days, the north and northwest highlands of Scotland has been the place to be. Mid-20s has been almost uh, a given every single day. This has been the sunniest part of the country, whereas further south, closer to low pressure, there's been more showers, longer spells of rain, cloud cover. That has been uh, providing quite a quite a contrast actually across the UK in terms of the conditions that we've experienced so far this month. But uh, I thought I would show you that because it, it really does stand out how mild and how dry. Now, there's only been 11 millimetres of rain falling here at Marfogan Weather HQ in Edmonton, Rosshire, in through the first 16 days of the month. Only a handful of days has seen measurable rainfall. Stark contrast, we had 22 days of rainfall last month in April, but also in stark contrast to this month, there's parts of England that has already seen over a month's worth of rain, whereas we've seen hardly a drop in some stations across the north. So rather interesting to, to see the overall contrasts that can be the case uh, here in the, the UK. 
So we'll look at the 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 day to day stuff in just a second, but I wanted to show you uh, some of the longer range output with regards to the month of June, as we are getting within two weeks of the beginning of meteorological summer. So the CANSIPS model total accumulated precipitation for the month of June is actually showing wetter than average, which is quite interesting here. This also coincides quite nicely with the NMME model. Now this is May. I wanted to show you this before I show you June because look at how it's actually showing very nicely that dry north, wet south scenario. So I think that's quite standout actually that the, the, the model did a pretty good job at the, you know, the, the rainfall anomaly so far. So there's the can sips, like I said, wetter than average. NMME model, that's a hard one to say, isn't it? This is uh, showing also a wetter than average June overall for the UK. Average to slightly wetter than average. Now, to go in contrast with this, this is the CFSV2 for the month of June. It's actually indicating largely drier than average. So kind of take your pick. What is it going to be? Wet than average? Drier than average? Average? Yeah, uh, it will be interesting to see. This is the CMC weeklies showing the period for the next 32 days. So this is the period now through the 17th of June. And it's also indicating a wetter than average pattern as well. The ECMWF extended. So this is the weeklies and this is the upcoming 32 day period. Warmer than average. But in terms of precipitation, it is indicating drier than average. So again, along with the CFSV2, it's indicating a drier than average June. So can I again take your pick? What one would you want to go for? So obviously I've not showed you the upper air pattern, but sometimes at this time of the year it can be a little bit difficult sometimes with no clear higher pressure compared to average or lower pressure compared to average. But this is the CANCEPS model and it's actually showing a reasonable trough over the UK and over Ireland here, centered over the southern UK, if you notice here. So that would indicate um, the reason why, first and foremost, why it's wet than average. Let's have a look at the two meter temperature anomalies from the same period. It's actually indicating slightly warmer than average around more the coast of the northern UK. It's wa warmer than average across Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, but it's close to average across the bulk of the UK mainland. Also cooler than average across France, which is quite interesting. Northwestern Iberia, colder than average, South and southeastern and up the Mediterranean coast, it's actually warmer than average. But generally speaking, that is not a particularly blowtorch looking June. Now, unfortunately, the NMME model does uh, give you upper air, uh, upper air anomalies for the time of the year. But they, if you look at the CFSV2, remember it's showing drier than average. It's showing kind of high pressure almost across the board, with the exceptions of the Mediterranean basin. So it's actually indicating the strongest heights to the north and weakest heights to the south here, which is which is also quite interesting. Looking at the uh, CMC weeklies for the upcoming 32-day period, so th this is also showing wetter than average, as you can see here. Let's have a look at the upper air chart here and see what the 30 days is going to be showing here. So it's showing the negative, like the CANSIPS, but a little bit further south towards southwestern Europe, which also would coincide quite nicely with my, my general thinking of higher pressure to the north and lower pressure possibly to the south. That is what I'm starting to sway towards with regards to the June solution. But we'll see what happens because we're still nearly two weeks from, from the period here. So still models can chop and change, but nonetheless, uh, quite interesting to see uh, it indicating actually a rather unsettled and cool look southern UK and especially down into France, Spain, Portugal as well. Remember we've got quite a drought going on especially across uh, well much of uh, Iberia but especially across east and south of the country. Looking at the upper air or let's have a look at the, the, the temperature anomaly chart here for the same period for so the next 32 days. So this is incorporating the second half of May obviously as well as the first half of of June and it's indicating here that we've got a warmer than average UK. I think it's going to be a warmer than average, but the question mark is going to be wetter or drier than average. 
You notice here southern France and much pretty much all of Iberia is indicating slightly below average temperatures, which is quite quite interesting to see actually. ECMWF extended here. Let's have a look and see what the upper air pattern is indicating. Don't think I've showed you this so far. So this is the next 30 days, obviously, and it's pretty much across the board higher pressure. So there's no real indicator. There's no nothing really to go by here in terms of that. In terms of the temperature anomaly chart here for the next 32 days, it's indicating, again, warmer than average across the north, cooler than average across much of France. But notice Spain and Portugal has got a little bit of warmer than average actually showing up here. But again, it's no real blowtorch uh, hot June by the looks of it. Now, I want to show you the CFSV2 because this is quite interesting to see. Not the CFSV2, the GFS mjo pattern so i've showed you in recent times the manjulian oscillation remember it was in strong phase four and five it rotated back into the inner circle then it's kind of leaped around phases two and three but the the model is indicating a, a bit more of a pronounced pronounced looking phase four and five now why am i showing you this what's important about that phase four and five that tends to lead to enhanced convection over the maritime continent for example but it also can tend to lead to more region in the eastern United States and Western Europe here. And uh, as we look towards the next several weeks, it does look as if higher pressure is going to try and linger on. We also could have a spell of warmer conditions for much of Europe towards the end of this month. And that would possibly coincide with that phase four and five of the NGO. Now, this is the Arctic Oscillation. Notice here we're at neutral levels at the moment, and it's weakly positive, expected to be the case. In fact, the, the weekly positive is the mean run. But you notice here that there's quite a lot of members indicating a reasonably firm plus one, plus two sigma above neutral for the Arctic Oscillation. The stronger the positive Arctic Oscillation tends to lead to more uh, strong uh, positives over the, the middle altitude pattern, more negative over the North Atlantic. Greenland up in towards say uh, the Arctic region as well. Now the NAO pattern as well is is indicating here uh, close to neutral. Now it's slightly negative at the moment and is expected to go close to the neutral line uh, over the next week or so here. Looking at the current temperatures, the place to be in recent times has been the northern half of the UK, but generally we've got the uh, upper teens to low twenties across the vast majority of the UK at this moment in time. We've got a weak area of high pressure at the moment. That area of low pressure being pesky over the near continent. That's been providing a lot of showers, a lot of disturbed weather across a large swathe of the continent. We've also got very warm conditions, may I add, across central and northern portions of Scandinavia. If we look at the current um, pressure chart here, highest pressure across the north and the east, lowest pressure further west, as you can see here. We've got a modest area of high pressure over the UK at the moment here. And with a little bit of milder conditions, we're seeing a little bit more capping, less in the way of sharp production over the UK as we move through the course of today and tomorrow and even into the day on Sunday. We've got this kind of flabby, weak, nondescript area of low pressure to the south of the UK. That has been the bugbear for much of England and Wales and parts of the Republic of Ireland through the vast majority of the week just gone, by the way. It's still lingering there. And uh, with the uh, warm fronts uh, like kind of lingering over the southern UK, that may be a trigger to a few showers and even some longer spells of rain or uh, kind of cloud cover, for example, as well, has been lingering places and is associated with fronts attached to that area of low pressure that has been lingering for some time now. Looking finally at the GFS, this is the overview precipitation cloud temperature and pressure for the next several days here. And you know that area of low pressure uh, dominating the majority of Central and Southern Europe. We've got higher pressure across the North. And uh, we'll look at the temperatures actually for the, the continent before we look at this actually. So this is the current temperatures across Europe. And you notice here, it helps if I get to the right chart. Bear with me folks, sorry about this. Uh, so here's the temperatures here, the current ones at that. So moderately warmer than average across the UK and Ireland at the moment here. Notice here France, not really overly warm actually for the time of the year. And even Spain and Portugal, the vast majority is seeing upper teens to low 20s. Warmest temperatures being 
uh, in the far east of the country along the coast of uh, the coast is here you can see here some modest warm across italy corsica sardinia the balearics only in the low 20s for example but very hot conditions may I add across north africa where we've seen record breaking temperatures both by day and night across parts of libya tunisia for example and then further east uh, algeria has been hot uh, and across towards say uh, the far northeast of the continent as well but here's the temperatures uh, i'm talking about uh, 26 celsius quite far north this is the warmest temperature of the year so far for central and northern scandinavia so uh, pleasant conditions here northern portions of germany much of poland uh, seeing temperatures into the low to mid 20s here but cool conditions across uh, the northern alpine region we've seen tornadoes in parts of northern italy we've seen flooding in parts of a uh, uh, corsica sardinia not corsica and sardinia parts of the the balkan region and northern italy in recent times we've seen some fairly wet conditions also back to the gfs and we'll finally end with this play through the next several days and you can see here the area of low pressure continuing to generate some showers with a, a modest pressure field over the UK. We've still got that chance of seeing with the daytime heating, uh, the development of showers and local thunderstorms here. But generally fairly quiet through the course of the weekend. We've got some showers blowing up day by day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then as we move through into the early portions of next week, we've still got plenty of showers and th thunderstorms blowing up with the course of daytime heating, for example, um, across the vast majority of the continent here, that high pressure is largely restricted to Scandinavia at this moment in time. And you can see that we continue to have that north uh, or easterly airflow. We've even got some slightly cooler air drifting in to the northern UK. So over the course of the weekend, we're actually going to see temperatures cooling off the further north you are across the UK, warmest temperatures, Again, relatively subdued at the, the kind of low 20s. Nothing major to speak about over the next several days in terms of temperature. But you see, generally speaking, we maintain this rather benign pattern. Area of low pressure tries to wind up uh, and kind of knocks on, on the eastern UK door as we move towards the middle portions of next week. But you notice here the Azores High trying to then exert its influence again as we press towards the middle and second half of next week. But this is a long way off, obviously. So you have to take that with a large grain of salt. Finally, let's have a look at the CFSV2 weeklies for the next couple of weeks and see what the latest run is indicating here. Certainly does help if you get to the right chart. Uh, bear with me. Sorry about this. And we'll end with that because I think I've waffled on long enough so this is the upcoming seven days in terms of precipitation drier than average uh in the week two you can see here the central europe wetter than average week two is indicating again drier than average and then as we move into the month of june it looks if average to even possibly slightly wetter than average but notice here that uh, we do have a reduction in rainfall which indicates to me that we're going to have a warmer and slightly drier than average may all being well and that would go very nicely with my forecast so this is the upcoming seven days in terms of the 500 millibar pattern strongest heights to the north and to the southeast negative across france and iberia indicating that that unsettled weather and relatively cool compared to the time of the year week two that area of high pressure maintains its uh, influence over northern europe weaker heights across the central mediterranean indicating the continuation of unsettled conditions and again, as we move into week one of June, it still has that high to the north of the continent, which is quite interesting to see. Looking at temperature-wise, finally, uh, and you can see here what it's showing. So week one, it's only showing you week one and two, but this is a week one, cooler than average across Iberia, warmer than average across the UK and Ireland. You often find when there's higher pressure across the UK or near the UK, you tend to have lower pressure down across Siberia, and that is the case. Week two indicating warmer than average across the majority of the continent. So anyway, I think we've got through it. I hope you've stuck around for that. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. Plenty more to come up the coming weekend. So stay tuned for that. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with the latest interview on Weather Talk. Bye for now.